Yo, hello, hello, welcome to the elephant in the room. My name is Aaron and in today's video we're going to talk about the second part of how trade facts things up. So let's dive right into it. It's about science research and the Trump superhero asks. What would you trust more, a drug research funded by the state or a drug research funded by a drug company? Think about it. Because he explains that state healthcare is underfunded and wants to avoid costs so they may treat you poorly and delay tests and treatments, private healthcare wants to rip you off. There was a study done in Australia where they um, compared the private healthcare and state healthcare and what they found out was that the private healthcare sent people to do unnecessary tests and treatments way more often than the state healthcare, but also that doctors in private hospitals charge a lot more money than they should, so they were taking advantage of sick people, showcasing how the private is under a bigger influence of trade and wants more profit. And the same thing happened, um, happens in the UK and perhaps everywhere around the world. The next thing he shows us is how studies done by big companies are of course influenced and biased and um, there was Coca-Cola who paid scientists to basically lie about the bad health effects of sugar and to shift the attention towards exercise. And that's no surprise in our world where like 60% of all um, studies were done are funded by companies, only 20% are from universities and 10% are um, from governments. So of course whenever a big company um, funds a study you should always um, be critical and um, question the study and how it was done because of course the company influences that study. The Trump superhero explains the entire science field understands the effects of trade. No scientific study can be trusted when it is funded by a private organization, by a company, or at times when it is funded by a shady government. This is something understood worldwide. Many scientists understand that and are very well aware of it. And Trom only goes one step further to blame the trade and not just one of the thousands of its baby monsters money. How does trade influence science media? The girl is laying on her couch and she is saying Netflix is so fucking great. You can find so much stuff and the subscription is so cheap. I pay 10 bucks a month and I have access to a ton of stuff on any device. But the Trump superhero says, Netflix is a charlatan too my friend. It will serve you anything that you want as long as you keep your subscription going. It will scratch your back, massage your feet and brush your hair as long as you remain their customer. It may sound great to some, but they are again fooled into thinking that this is something good. And he compares PBS and Discovery Channel. PBS is like give me money and I'll provide good science programs. And Discovery Channel is like I'll invest my own money. Then I make clickbait science programs to take my money back. And the Trump superhero curates documentaries on Video Need. Another super good educational website where you have access to um, thousands of documentaries and educational materials. There are documentaries, movies and courses, you can check it out. Everything is straight free there. And what he figured out over the last, I don't know, 10 years or so is that channels who are funded in advance provide more scientific, saner, um, educational content than the ones who have to make money somehow. And there are many examples provided here, but I won't get into detail right now. You can see here as well, ABC, Four Corners, BBC, PBS, Al Jazeera um, are amongst um, NASA and ESA if we think about the trade bubble. And the other ones, um, 
that we have like Nat Geo, Netflix, TLC, RT, Discovery and Animal Planet and History Channel. They are super close to the trade bubble. They produce clickbait programs and um, reality shows and all kind of that. And the Trump superhero says, keep in mind what I'm saying is that some are under the influence of trade more than others. So the next page is about news. Um, there's a video from Jimmy Wales, the founder of Wikipedia, about the influence of trade in news. Then there's a company in China that has the following prices for all kinds of articles. So it's just a big business in these days. And there's even another company in China that claims to be monitoring over 3000 websites and forums and can influence opinions by posting as many as 100 posts per minute. And this is happening all over the world and in so many ways. You can buy likes, followers, influence, whatever you want. On the internet you can create your own news media and focus only on making money by buying content and influence, then putting ads on your content. So as we can see everything is kind of corrupted and became such a huge business these days. Um, the Trump superhero says even the state of healthcare news is a total disaster because for example um, there are TV shows like Dr. Oz and the uh, Doctors and the research team analyzed these shows and they found out that about 78% of statements made on the Dr. Oz show did not align with evidence-based medical guidelines, society recommendations or authority statements. For the doctors this was about 80%. So it's completely um, fucked up. And then there's also this super cool website healthnewsreview.org that's a big team of journalists and healthcare professionals who are supported through donations and universities. And of course they are reviewing health news. But what happened is they ran out of money and couldn't continue their journalism, which was not clickbait, but pure scientific and um, very well researched. So that's just what happens um, in our trade-based world. The Trump superhero explains, so the influence of the force of trade is clear when it comes to science media, documentaries, journalistic, investigative programs or news. If they are funded in advance and have no profit model attached to them, they are far better quality because they don't have to sell documentaries or news stories and hype them up. But if they are privately funded and or for profit, then these programs are going to be exaggerated, deceiving and will present poor quality material because the focus will be on what sells best. He explains that with a short story about Johnny and Johnny is a good guy, he loves science and wants to make science videos. To explain how the world works, what is gravity, the sun, the birds, the water, the me and the you. Then Johnny starts to um, record the first video with his smartphone, it is about relativity, which is a tough subject. And he uploads that um, video on MyTube the most well-known video streaming service in the universe. He gets some tens of views and he is happy that some people watched his video. He is so passionate, he makes more videos, the views increase but not by much. One day however, he decides to make a video about the top 10 unsolved mysteries in the universe. It is an easy video compared with the others because he mainly lists the mysteries that he learned from a website. And he posts that video and he gets 45,000 videos. Wow, from hundreds to thousands in one video. He feels great. MyTube has also a reward system. They make currency from displaying ads on the videos that people upload. So to encourage more people to upload videos, they give them a share of that. MyTube cares about views and time spent watching because that means more and better targeted ads and therefore more currency for MyTube. Johnny's video made him 37 Cicero coins, the currency of MyTube. The views, the likes, the shares and the coins that Johnny gained from this video is going to influence him a lot. 
He focuses on making more of his original science heavy videos, but they get very few views and it takes a lot of time to make them. Johnny has to go to college and he needs currency and he knows that his top 10 mysteries videos brought him some coins. So he decides to make another top 10 mysteries, this time top 10 chemistry mysteries, then top 10 mysteries that baffle scientists, then top 5 shocking discoveries of 2018. He gets the point, clickbait titles and poorly made videos, not a lot of effort put into making them give him the highest rewards. Coins, likes, shares, comments, his videos are poorly researched and badly made but very popular. He doesn't spread science anymore but misinformation. He now makes thousands of views per video and does a lot of Cicero coins. His material life is good, his conscience raped. He became a prostitute and a charlatan. Johnny was too close to the trade bubble. He had to engage into trades with the society he lives under and through a system like MyTube that is also under the influence of the same society. Both entities needed food, shelter, access to needs and services, comfort and security, so they had to trade for that. Trade with the state, trade between themselves, trade with others. That led Johnny to put profits on top of anything. He needed Cicero coins because he needed access to food, shelter, to a life, to this society. And the Trump superhero explains, in our real society, the most popular video platform YouTube is exactly the same, because it incentivizes people to create any stupid, nonsense, ridiculous bullshit content uh, just to get views and likes and shares. And also the YouTube algorithm recommends you any kind of content that make you hooked to watch more videos. For example, if you watch a video on YouTube about planet Earth or the moon landing, the YouTube algorithm might recommend you um, a conspiracy video about that, that the moon landing was fake. Or if you watch a flat Earth video, he su suggests you many more flat Earth videos just to reinforce your belief. And this is just so dangerous because millions, even billions of people are watching YouTube on a daily basis. There are also great videos about that from Tristan Harris who used to work at Google and he um, became there a design ethicist. So he studied that, he became an attention engineer and he knows the methods of how these platforms work. It's not just YouTube but also Facebook and Instagram and how they make people addicted just to serve them more ads and collect more data about them. It is really crazy. And maybe you've also seen The Social Dilemma, another documentary about that thing. But what the documentary really misses is the incentive which pushes these companies to want as much data and as much currency and as much um, attention from people because they forget about this trade thing. So yeah, I was really disappointed because the documentary was well made and very interesting. But what it really misses is the point what pushes people to want as much attention and data from their users which is our trade-based society. So what we see on YouTube is that people create any kind of nonsense, dumb content to harvest the attention from people and especially also young children um, who are a lot on their phones or iPads or so and they are trapped in this endless YouTube loophole where the YouTube algorithm just recommends them any kind of nonsense, stupid stuff just to get them hooked and um, they have no clue what's going on. The Trump superhero shows some more examples and he explains the quality of any media, not only science, news, videos, movies, articles, etc. sharply declines when the media entities, companies, individuals or states are close to the trade bubble. He explains now that if he wouldn't be supported by people who donate to Trump, then how could he survive? Like, um, should he sell his books or should he sell t-shirts to those who donate to the project? 
but it's a slippery slope because then you care maybe more about um, selling t-shirts and not producing original and very well researched content so it is really tricky to make it in this world and luckily the Trump project remains um, far away from the trade bubble alongside Wikipedia and Health News Review. Um, but of course it depends on people who support the project. The last point of this video that the Trump superhero is showing us is breaking promises. These guys are saying, look Trump dude, we get it. You showed us a lot of examples of how companies, individuals or states can fuck this up when they are close to the trade bubble. Okay, we get that. But things are getting better, companies are becoming more responsible and we have to push for them to become more transparent and care about their customers. But the Trump superhero says, wild dreams my friend, wild indeed. And he shows us this guy, Mark Zuckerberg, and an interview of him, where he says privacy is so important for Facebook, um, we care about our users, we just want to connect the world um, and make the world a better place. But in the end, of course, Facebook is um, caring only about making profits and they don't give a shit about it, their users. Interestingly, although Facebook collects pretty much everything about its users, the founder paid over 30 million pounds to buy the four houses that surrounded his own 7.3 million pound home in Palo Alto, California. He also asked construction workers and interior designers working on the house to sign non-disclosure agreements before starting renovations. So he only cares about his own privacy. Another example is uh, Google. When Google started, they had a motto saying don't be evil as a message towards or because of their competitors who they believed exploited their users, to quote them. Needless to say, today Google is perhaps the biggest data collecting machine on earth, invading people's privacy like no one else. Another example is Microsoft and Microsoft has that motto of embrace, extend and extinguish. They seem to be the only ones who didn't break their promises, the Tron superhero is joking. This is basically a strategy to remove any kind of competitors and um, yeah, become the monopole, if you will. And they have a history of doing shady things in that regard. So when you see them investing into Linux or developing a Linux based operating system for the Internet of Things, you have all the reasons to doubt that there are good intentions there. And maybe a company like Instagram, WhatsApp or LinkedIn are honest for a while, but then Facebook or Microsoft buys them and that honest attitude quickly changes. The Trump superhero wants us to wonder. Say SpaceX or Virgin Galactic and the others are awesome and great, good guys. But even if that's the case, which might not even be, you have to wonder how long are they going to be like that when every single example of companies and projects coming too close to the trade bubble, becomes sucked in by it. SpaceX is already serving the military by deploying spying satellites, so you must think about this. SpaceX is likely to become the taxi of space, satisfying any client who pays enough. The Trump superhero says, I think it's fair to say that anyone or anything that gets close to the trade bubble is going to fuck things up regardless of their statements or terms and conditions or previous behaviors and acts. The summary so far is, we first understood what the force is, then we accepted that the force creates the problems. Follow the money to see where the problems are, some say, but I slightly rephrase that and say, follow the trade to see where the problems are. The slope towards the trade bubble is very slippery, folks, very. Smoking tobacco greatly increases your risks of developing a plethora of cancers, but if you smoke tobacco it doesn't mean you'll get cancer. 
you're just more likely to. Staying close to the trade bubble doesn't mean that you will automatically become a charlatan, abuser or a thief, but it increases the chances for you to become that. By a lot. The same way that someone can smoke tobacco and live to be 100 without developing cancer, a billionaire or a company or someone close to the trade bubble can create an honest and scientific project that will help humanity. But both scenarios are there, very much so. So I hope it was interesting, maybe you learned a thing or two. Um, you know you can access all our materials trade free on tromsite.com. And the next video is going to be about get ready, so be prepared. And I look forward to that video already. See you then in the next video. Take care and much love.